Hey, this is Stu, and again, I'm here with John Scott, which is brilliant. And we, every day we've been starting the practice with the Focus 12, and we'll explain a little bit towards what that is in a sec. And um, so many students are finding it really valuable that I said, John, can we do a little video on the Focus 12? Because it's a, a real, quite a special tool. Uh, it's, it's a breath technique, would we say that? Yes. But it's also more than that. It's more than that. So can you explain to us, A, what it is, and then B, why it's more than just breathing? Okay, um, Stu, what happened was in my quest to, to, to really understand meditation, because yeah. Guruji never took us to meditation. He may have taken Richard Freeman and a few of right. that level to, to meditation. But uh, our practice was a meditation. Um, However, my parallel reading, it was in the heart, uh, Tibetan book of heart yoga that Geshe Michael Roach was writing, right. and he did a perfect 10, where you used to try and uh, keep your mind counting 10 breaths. If you got up to three and you thought something else, you'd go back and start at one. Okay, so you had to complete it without any side things. Yeah. And now Guruji used to count to 25. We used to do 25 breaths in, in, in Lotus. Yeah. Uh, and then over the years it came down to 10. But I used to watch Guruji, he was always counting with his thumb. So he never had a mala. Okay. And um, I then discovered that in uh, Krishnamacharya's, uh, uh, sorry, Desikachar's book f in tribute to Krishnamacharya, The Heart of Yoga, he had in a pranayama section he had an, uh, a Vedic way of counting. And it was multiples of 12. So on the left hand, you do the, the first round of 12. Uh -huh. And you start by counting at the base of the index finger. You count up the index finger, one, two, three. Yeah. You then count across the tips, four, five, six. And then you count down seven, eight. Across the bottom, nine, 10. And then you go in, 11 and 12. Now when I saw those arrows, because I'm dyslexic and a designer, I saw the, the, I saw the spiral that was there. Mm -hmm. Because this is different to the to a, a standard way of counting, isn't yeah. it? Which is like down one finger and you start the next. Yeah. And this is used quite commonly when you're doing pranayamas and things, and you want to know yeah. know maybe where you are. Maybe on one of our other videos we talked about the power of awareness, attention, yeah, uh, interest, inquiry, imagination. I have an incredible imagination. And so, <laughs> <laughs> we Johnny has a lot of imagination, <laughs> the report card. Yes, but academically challenged. So we're in a sense doing self-hypnosis or we're counting ourselves into yogic concentration or potentially dharana, uh, dhyana. Uh -huh. So dharana is 12 seconds in the Vedic formula and dhyana is 12 times dharana, which is 144 seconds. Yeah which is two and a half minutes, which is phenomenal. But 144 is one of the Fibonacci numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, right? which is a spiral, a universal pattern. And so I start off from counting the macrocosm into the microcosm. Mm -hmm. So I'm counting myself from out on all of this interruption or disturbance, let's say, yeah. or the disturbance of my thoughts. I count myself from, I just pretend, imagine, from the macrocosm down into the microcosm. And then I'll count myself back out. And when I count myself back out the spiral, I've gone then from the microcosm back to the, mi the macrocosm and mm -hmm. I see it differently my awareness, my attention is totally different. Okay. Because I've done a mindfulness breathing counted technique. And this is the, it, this is the important bit, isn't it, as well, that it's a, mind, it's a mindfulness exercise. Yeah, it's well. both mind, breath and body. Yeah. And so I use it now as a technique to, uh, as the stepping stone to my dynamic meditation, asana practice, yeah. or a stepping stone to my static meditation, my pranayama and uh, silent sitting. Yeah. Is there something special as well? I, rem I remember reading something about the fact of when you combine breath with counting, with uh, the movement of the fingers, 
that it triggers more of a calming relaxation response on the body. Yeah, and that could, would be an aspect of Tristana. Mm. So it's very good for bringing you down and to present. So we would, we've been using it before we've started in yes. the mornings. Yes. Would you use it at any other times? Um, there's one of the girls that came back from last session and she said, John, I just want to share with you, that I took away the Focus 12. Mm. I, s I suffer with anxiety and I've been using it for anxiety. Cool, so whenever um, she felt a little yeah. bit... Yeah. yeah, so I'm going to ask her to share that with the group. Yeah. So for example, let's say your anxiety is flying mm. and you're ready to take off and you're nervous. Do a Focus 12. Yeah. They've already said, seat belts on, seat back upright, armrests down, tray table tucked in, window shades down, Oh, window shades up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I reach up for the mask to know that I need to put the mask on to breathe. So I'll take you through one. Mm, I'll big, take you through great. one. But then the real challenge is I'm doing this exercise. I'm breathing it yeah. and breathing for you. Yeah. So I'm not just counting you through it. I'm still doing the breath as well. And w I'm breathing and speaking. So I'm sort of doing... A kumbhaka. Okay. I'm sort of doing a pranayama by doing it for you. But then I'm passing it to you, and the challenge would be could you then do it for somebody else? Yeah. Because doing it for yourself inside, the responsibility is not the same. Mm. And the moment you try and do this to a partner or a friend, like if you tried to show this to Lorraine afterwards. Yes. It'd be really interesting to see. Because then, goes. actually, I often use that as like a, a teaching technique too. Do, how well do you understand and it? Because then if you can teach somebody else, yes. you know you know it. Yes. And quite often you don't yes. know it, do yes. you? So let me take you through <laughs> it and then, then, then I can... Then I'll tell Lorraine. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll show you some more technique. Cool. Okay, so um, let's sit nice and tall. So it's on the left hand we count. Left hand's counting. That's one round. If I was, mm. if I was doing multiples, 108 would be... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. Yeah. So this is the multiple. So yeah. Guruji never had a mala, but for 108 rounds, it would be nine, nine of these. And these ones. Yeah. So and I've seen you do something with this hand yeah. as well. So, so what you so doing Guruji with that So Guruji was always counting with his left hand. Yeah. And his right hand was always saying, inhale is up. Yeah. Exhale is down. Yeah. Inhale is forward. Exhale is back. He was conducting. Okay. With his hand. So my hand conducts the breath. Okay. So do we want to be doing that too? Does it give us... Yeah. You can just copy for me for now so that we okay. can do one round for the camera. Okay. For the audience and then we'll break it down again. Okay. Okay. So let's all breathe in together naturally. Rechaka exhale. Ekam one. Poraka inhale. Ekam one, Rechaka exhale. Dwe two, Poraka inhale. Dwe two, Rechaka exhale. Three ni three, Poraka inhale. Three ni three, Rechaka exhale. Chatwari four, Poraka inhale. Chatwari, Rechaka exhale. Puncha five, Poraka inhale. Puncha five, Rechaka exhale. Shat six, Poraka inhale. Shat six, Rechaka exhale. Sup the seven, Poraka inhale. Sup the seven, Rechaka exhale. Ashto eight, Poraka inhale. Ashto eight, Rechaka exhale. Nava nine, Poraka inhale. Nava nine, Rechaka exhale. Desha ten, Poraka inhale. 
Desha 10, Rechaka, exhale. Ekadasha 11, Poraka, inhale. Ekadasha 11, Rechaka, exhale. Dwadasha 12, Poraka, inhale. Dwadasha 12, exhale. Breathe in naturally. Let the breath fall out naturally. Right. So the reason why I started before class is people have all arrived from different places, different mm. times, different uh, states of awareness. They may have come from an argument. They may have come from a, a late taxi. They may have come from a puncture. Yeah. Whatever. When we sit there, it has the calming effect, the resultant calming effect, is the fact that all of that chitter, all of that fluctuating thinking mind stuff, yeah. has now been put to rest because we've now focused on breathing, counting the breath. And it does bring you with the, with the hand movements and the counting and the fingers and the breath, you don't have much room for thinking of other yeah, stuff, yeah, do you? It is. Yeah. Mind is the count, mm. breath yeah. and the body yeah. is in this. Yeah. So you'll see on my hand that I've, I've, I've written the, the 12 numbers. And so what you can do in a notebook is just draw around your hand. Yeah. Quite simply just draw around your hand and note that on on each finger, there's two lines. So you've got four fingers, that two lines on them, makes, yeah. makes three spaces each. And then just count around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then that makes a spiral. Yeah. So we get a spiral, which is, for me, the, the Fibonacci sequence. I spiral from the macrocosm into the microcosm, and then I go back out from the microcosm to the macrocosm. Yeah. And there's the spiral. The breathing sequence is also, the pattern was quite simple. The pattern was, we started with an exhale, and you exhale, a full exhale, and you count that one. Right, yeah. And then you have an inhale, and you do a full inhale, and you count that one. So there's a f that's a full breath cycle. Yeah. So what that means is for every exhale one, there is an inhale one. one. Yeah. We then move the thumb, exhale two, inhale two. two. Move the thumb, exhale three, inhale three. Yeah. yeah. So you move it before you start yeah. the next exhale, which yes. is the breath cycle. Yes. Yeah. So. It is a paradox in that sense that mm. my thumb is moving first, but that's yeah. so th I know where I am. Right. Yeah, you're on number, number such and yeah. such. Yeah, and I'm doing yeah. a full exhale on that one yeah. and a full inhale on that one. I've yeah. once I've completed that. So, for example, what I'm doing is, let's say I've got three breaths stacked up there. Yeah. If you put your hand up there, yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to go exhale or rechaka, Pick up Akam one, yeah. pour Aka inhale, and put one there. Yeah. And say it. One. one. Or Akam. Yeah. Rechaka exhale. Dwe two. Pour Aka inhale. Dwe two. two. So I'm posting it. Rechaka three ni three. Pour Aka three ni three. And the yeah. pattern goes on to twelve. Yeah. Okay. And just so people understand what you're saying when you say rechaka and puraka. Rechaka, mm. you retching, <laughs> you're getting all the toxicity out, you're exhaling, and puraka is inhale, you're pouring in, yeah. let's say pure air. Pure, yeah. Yeah? Puraka is inhale, rechaka, exhale. Mm. Mm. Um, and so when you were saying you spiral, so there we spiraled in, Yeah. so when do you spiral back out again? Through the rest mm. of the practice? When do you, s s what happens after, th after 12? Do you go to 13? <laughs> do, you, do you start again back at Aikam? Yeah. Those are the questions that will arise. Um, if the technique works, 
You've got Dharana is 12 seconds. Yeah. 12 seconds could be achieved with an exhalation, one, two, three, an inhalation, one, two, three, so four breaths, yeah. you could be at Dharana, yogic concentration. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Let's try that. Let's exhale. Now, if, what's, if, you're, if you're putting the sense of hearing, hearing that sound, yeah. if you're feeling that yeah. in your nostrils and your lip, if you're seeing the space, so with, it's better with the eyes closed, if yeah. you're seeing the space outside flowing to the space inside, yeah. if you're filtering that through the back of the throat, tasting it, metering, measuring it, if you're smelling the fragrance of the breath, and all five senses are held back from going out to the noise of the children, to the cicadas, yeah. to everything out there, well, that's be, it's pulled back from the drawing of the outward senses seeking, yeah. turned them in onto the sound, the touch, the sight, the taste, the smell of the breath, we're then in Pratihara. Yeah. We're focused in on the breath. Now if we keep that going for three seconds out, three seconds in, three seconds out, three seconds in, that's 12 seconds. Mm. Where this is a this is a Vedic formula. You're at the threshold of yogic concentration. If you then multiply that by twelve, you'll get dharana. I mean dhyana. Yeah. So dhyana is twelve times dharana. Uh -huh. Which is 144 seconds. And so what happens is when you go into that place, you're potentially at a meditation. And so one of my meditations was well, that's very similar to a spiral, yeah. very similar to the Fibonacci sequence. 12, 12 is 144. 144 is a Fibonacci number. It goes like this. I'll do it backwards uh -huh. and you'll see it. The Fibonacci sequence is 0, 1, 1. Okay. 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144. Pick a number, start off with 1. You go exhale one, you add the number before it. There's nothing there. Zero. Uh -huh. So one plus zero That's is zero. one. Yeah. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Three, yeah. three plus two is five. Five plus three is eight. Eight plus five is thirteen. Thirteen plus five is twenty one. 21 plus 13 is 34. 34 plus 21 is 55. 55 and 34 is 89. And 89 and 55 is 144. I arrived at the end of this little meditation at 144. Uh -huh. Which is 12 times 12. How do we get that in the breathing sequence? Om Na Ma Shi Vaya. So if we could do that down here, Om Na Ma Shi Vaya on the exhale uh -huh. is six syllables. Om Na Ma Shi Vaya on the inhale is six syllables. Six plus six equals twelve. Uh -huh. In one breath cycle, with all of your senses trained in on your breath, you could be at the doorway to Dharana. M multiply that by 12, you're at the doorway to dhyana, which is meditation, or for let's say fixation. Yeah. And so, uh, where it takes you is, is to that place. If the technique works, there's no more counting. You're absorbed in the pranic flow of the breath. Yeah. If the technique doesn't work, let's go back and start again. There must be something happening. We're not totally focusing on the sound or the yeah. quality, all those five qualities of the breath. And it's a, it's a technique to, to really see if we can do pratyahara. Yeah. Can we hold the senses from going out somewhere else? Can we keep those senses? That's what pratyahara is. It's to hold them back from the objects of the senses, drawing them out. So our attention's outward. And there's many five senses drawing us out in different directions so we become distracted. Yeah. And with that distraction there's also you're drawn to the gratification of that sense. 
And so pratihara is to pull your senses back from being out, turn it in on something so that we can then, instead of having a distracted and busy mind, let's calm the mind down with the oil, which is the breath. Um, and focus then the senses on the breath and what happens is, as you said, mind, breath and body mm. takes you to this space. And so what we're looking at is potentially this, the Vedic formula is that Omnama Shavaya is six seconds out, Omnama Shavaya six seconds in is already 12, multiply that by 12 times. If we carry on going again, then Samadhi is 12 times Dar, uh, dhyana, uh -huh. which ends up being an astounding 28 minutes, Stu. Wow. Half an hour. Yeah. So the yogis could get themselves to the first level of samadhi, which is perfect meditation. Perfect meditation is absorption, and at that point you've left your, in, your individual separate self. Let's call it your self-important self. Mm. Let's call it our selfish self. When we leave our selfish, self-important self, we then notice something else bigger than us. You're then absorbed in the yoga of this amazing world. Yeah. And this is the first step. This is the first step. <laughs> Brilliant. And we can, if we can take that, that, that philosophy or that theory and that understanding into then counting our vinyasa, when we start counting our vinyasa, we're just doing a big one of these. Yeah. We're actually being a mala in motion. That's what Guruji called it, the yoga mala. That each breath movement was a bead to be counted and meditated on. Yeah. Here, each segment of the finger is a bead to be counted and meditated on. Cool. And that's you, so you had us going straight from this into our... Practice, first yeah. practice, yeah. Which we added great. one extra thing in. Yeah, we had the chant, didn't we? And also, uh, yes. We, we do a seven minutes. So once we've got the breath going, we do what, what I'm calling uh, the Christian Macharya spinal extension flexion stretch. It was one of my students, Vayu from Korea, who in his research came across this. Uh -huh. And so then from working with that, I've then realized all the way through the practice, especially you saw yesterday, at the back end of the practice, it's all flexion extension. Yes, flexion yeah. extension. As we get into the yeah, finishing yeah, sequence. It's all, yeah. Yeah. Well, for me, when I come to sit, Stu, yeah. I either do it first or I do it after we've done the teacher's chant. Yes. Um, because we sit often enough now, we're already being able to sit, sit tall. So yeah. what I do is I arrive, I sit, I establish the, the stillness and the breath that connection to breath. Then, having woken up through the breath, let's then take the breath into the nervous system, the spine, yeah. and really move the spine. And, and work out the pattern of breathing. That the inhalation, let's say Aikam 1, is an extension. The pelvis goes anterior, the heart lifts and opens, and we look up behind the hands. Dway 2 is a flexion in the spine, the pelvis goes posterior, we pull the heart and navel back, so really flexing the spine. Then Trini is to go straight back up again, anterior tilt, and heart lifts, and then the head last back looks up, extension, hyperextension. And then Chatwaris take the hands forward, you're in flexion posterior, and heart and navel back, and then draw the hands to the heart, puncha, inhale, hands and heart come together, and then head last again looks up. On the exhale, notice the head goes first, the head goes first, and the heart and navel goes back, and you go to posterior. Sup to seven, inhale, come up, and the head is last. And exhale, release. So this gives us the pattern that on the inhalation, yeah. head is last. On the exhalation, head is first. Yeah. On the inhalation, head is last. On the exhalation, head is first. And we bring that nicely into to your up dog down dog up dog down dog yeah 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 so you become more fluid so then I take that into our chatwari panchashat sapta and follow it right yeah through. so we're doing from breath to spine then to the whole body yeah brilliant 
Thanks so much, John. And you know, I hope guys, you have a have a play with this, and uh, people will find it really useful to do before the practice. It doesn't take very long, does it either? Yeah. And um, sometimes you can sit before that if you yeah. want to sit normally. Or what would you say if people want to do a longer meditation? Do this right at the beginning. Well, I you could say. start first by doing the Krishnamacharya yeah. seven vinyasa stretch to then be able to align to balance flexion with extension to get vertical. Yeah. And then go into a focus 12, twelve, and then continue it from there. If you have a mantra-based uh, practice, do a mantra of meditation, yeah. or you could then go into a pranayama. You yeah. could then start doing some ujjayi, some some of riti. You could then go into rechak or kumbhaka. Yeah, yeah. And then the practice. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Okay, guys, enjoy that, and uh, I'm sure we're going to be doing loads more with John because every time he's here, we grab him and try and get as much information out as we can. Thanks Thank so much, John, for sharing. We'll see you next year. Yeah, cool, cool.